What constitutes a remake, a remaster, or even a reboot? A question often asked, argued, and analyzed by many. EA found the motive to recreate a modern classic in Dead Space that carved out its own identity. Will history repeat itself? Now on today's performance review, I'll be covering consoles and PC, from resolution, effects, performance, and the coup de grace on PC. Does that come from the horror itself, or the DirectX 12 shader compilation. As covered in our preview two years ago, the upgrades and rebuilt assets, models and more transform the entire game. Isaac himself is now front and centre, with the title merging much of Dead Space 2's improvements into the first title. The original 2008 release with console and PC was an impressive title for the time, and still holds up well today due to its focused technology and strong art direction. As dark and grimy as the original was, more akin to the mid to late 90s movies such as Seven and Event Horizon, the game manages to make the original look bright in hindsight. With these comparisons showing you how sympathetic and equally focused the update is. Far more light sources emphasise the dark and also highlight focal points, with it becoming a tension building technique in the new title, as lights are disabled your torch becomes the only source, accelerating that claustrophobia. Improved occlusion comes from screen space ambient occlusion and even ray traced AO on PC, PS5 and Series X. Shadows are not only far more ambient, mixing shadow maps with screen space shadows, but also more accurate from multiple torches and electric strips. Although the original was very forward looking with its reliance on light and shadows, the team have ensured that flickering lights cause dancing shadows and looming shapes in many old and new areas. These updates and changes are often subtle, diverting your expectations even for long time fans such as myself. The opening offers a beacon into this, with Isaac now voiced as he was in the sequel, but the camera can now be swung round to his face prior to the infamous knight like helmet being donned. Significantly improved facial models, animation, eye movement and materials all leap out over the original's flat and single shaded surfaces. The gore is a core pillar, improved dismemberment with skin chopped away to reveal bone and sinew before finally cleaving the limb. This visual guide helps you to see the damage level to break through a gaggle of things quickly and buy you the time you need. But the fleshy Rob Bottin like transformations also highlight the effort and strides made on the current generation. The visual upgrades continue with SSR reflections, significantly increased geometry and detail, improved and fully remade textures with impressive PBR based materials, complete new areas, objects alongside changes to ship layout, puzzles and even how you access areas and tackle the objectives have all been sympathetically balanced with the original spirit front and centre. From a technical aspect these have all been very well designed and implemented, flattering and not fudging things for the sake of change. Purists may not like all of them, but they often work for the better or at least tweak the core design to a minor change in the long run. A good example is the abilities of gravity jumping now allowing wider freedom of exploration and level design when in these sections and new ones they've added, or new circuit breakers added to open and close sections within your power. Only adding to the locale we know so well, but as if we've forgotten some areas, as if they were there all the time but we simply missed them first time around. It's safe to say the results on a technical and artistic front are a rousing success and dare I say it, even managed to improve in some areas over the original, which is a tall order in anyone's book. But when the source material is this strong, the expectations are equally high. Now once past the leaps the new game offers over the old, even on the handheld Steam Deck version, are equal parts impressive and faithful. The use of Frostbite means 60fps or even greater on PC is a boost over the old Xbox 360 and PS3 versions 30fps at best. The visual fidelity, which I will call the ray tracing mode here for ease of this review, 
and performance modes on Series X and PlayStation 5 rely on DRS and it appears FSR 2 for their intended outputs. However, both target 60 FPS. Starting with the titled performance mode, this runs the lowest resolution level of 2560 by 1440 to maintain that 60 FPS range, along with lower effect with no ray tracing, reduced fog volumes, SSR quality and even texture detail. Some of this though is the FSR2 implementation does not appear to be correct, with the combination of mitmap bias and the sharpening pass in performance mode not being updated to compensate for the low resolution. The PC can also utilize both FSR2 or DLSS2, NVIDIA RTX only, to reduce the cuts in that pixel to performance recipe, but again, no option in that menu to adjust sharpening, which may be a nice addition from the team later. Bearing in mind with all DRS solutions, it may go higher and lower, but these were the counts I got most often. The image is often dark enough to make the resolution gap quite small when flicking from performance to ray tracing mode. Aiding performance further appears to be a VRS or variable rate shading implementation, which can be noticed on all three consoles and PC. Now the solution is often okay to middling, but it can improve performance at the cost of texture and pixel shading precision. But in close view surfaces such as Isaac himself within lifts, then pixel blocking can be visible causing almost a macro blocking look on assets. These appear worse on PC than consoles and can be more pronounced with motion vectors in FSR and DLSS on PC. But the Xbox Series S is affected the most due to its very low texture filtering causing floors and surfaces to fade into a muddy soup at times at close range alongside some of these blocky textures which again may be related to the FSR2 engine implementation but the console itself also suffers from a lower memory pool. Now in addition the resolution levels are also very low here which leads to a noisy and soft image at times. The Series S has only one mode which sits somewhere between the performance and ray tracing mode of the PS5 and Series X but it does not run ray traced AO which again is likely a memory limitation something we've seen a lot this generation. Although it's not a huge sacrifice because it can be hard to spot this often during the title. The cost is not exuberant, using my RX 6800 here at 4K TAA, it can cost anywhere between 5 and 10% dependent on the scene. The comparison to PlayStation 5 and Series X is unsurprisingly short, for all intents and purposes they are identical in both modes, DRS and FPS being the only potential delta. From multiple counts, the ray trace mode can hit a full 3840 by 2160, but the FSR2 pass is always reconstructing this, so that may not always be a native range. But in motion with such a high contrast game, FSR2 and motion blur, then I would say that even in side-by-sides, this does not really stand out, outside that texture clarity and filtering as mentioned. In addition, this mode turns off RTAO and enables the game's SSAO. SSR reflections are reduced, as are fog volumes and even the lighting in the game. Matching to PC settings is not possible, as even though across a selection of tests, the RTAO on PC does not match the consoles, along with lighting and SSR. As a rough guide, the consoles appear to be between medium and high on some, certainly shadow maps appear to be closest to medium, with most others being high. In performance mode though, they appear to drift closer to medium and using the PC as a rough proxy, going from ultra to high net to approximately 21% improvement and from high to medium, a further 35% gain. Now this is likely what the Series S is running at with lights possibly being closer to low, but the game has now been capped to 30 FPS both on the Series S and the PS5 and Series X in that non-performance mode. So the resolution deltas I've just touched are probably nearer the top and effects may have also been tweaked. Now that it's been capped to 30 FPS though, you can't get this unlocked performance, but it gives you an idea of how far over 30 FPS it actually is when you play it with the capped mode now engaged. Using this opening section as one of the most stressful ones I could find across all platforms, here we can get down to 30 FPS. Some of these are simply context memory stutters and general code issues that can cause some minor 60 to 80 millisecond stutters. But aside from these, all other dips stay within that 16 to 33 millisecond frame time. The net result is that in this section we are often around and even below the VRR range on all formats to solve the issues. That said though, as the game is largely comprised of corridor sections, these sections can hold on to that 60 FPS aside from single dips here and there. 
and I suspect there's not a great deal that can or needs to be done for the Xbox Series S version, aside maybe adding in a 30 FPS cap. That would be probably 100% locked. Right now though, the unlocked FPS is the best option for all, and though it's far from perfect on the Series S, it doesn't ruin it. The PS5 and Series X in performance mode are close to perfect, and I applaud the team in ensuring that players get to choose. What we see is a locked 60 FPS on PS5 and Series X in most of these heavy like for like sections compared to the RT mode, and with that same cinematic section we can see some small dips into the mid 50s before briefly returning to a smooth 60 FPS output. So the short answer here is, if you want a smooth and consistent performance, then your focus here should be on this mode. With the visual sacrifices covered, they're pretty minor to not be much of a decision. With that said though, the ray tracing mode does give us a better test of the two consoles, and what we see here is that Series X takes a small lead on performance in like for like sections. But these are single digit levels at best. Sometimes the PlayStation 5 is maybe 1-2 to two FPS ahead, and the Series X can be 2-4 to four in others but these would not really be picked up aside this kind of FPS graph. The biggest view though is in this mode, it's never at a lock 60 FPS on either and is often around 45 to 50 FPS in normal corridor exploration and battles and I believe this is due to the game using very high quality assets, alpha particles and as such it can become pixel limited on console and PC. This mode is certainly not bad, but you will notice these dips throughout your play and compared to the smooth performance mode, it can be a much bigger gap than the resolution and effects sacrifice. But that choice is yours, which is perfect. And as noted, like the Series S, it's been capped to 30 FPS on the ray tracing mode now, so these results are academic, but it shows that you will get a locked 30 FPS in this mode moving forward. So now moving on to PC, we get a choice of options to improve the image quality and performance, DLSS2, FSR2, and obviously base TAA, with the reconstruction netting you around 50% in like-for-like -like examples. So if you've got it, turn it on. Of the two reconstruction techniques, DLSS 2 is better, although neither of them are quite as good as TAA at 4K. To help this, a sharpening pass in the menu to improve both might help, but VRS is an issue on PC, you can't disable it, and there's no checkerboarding in the engine anymore, which has likely been laid to rest. Not the only thing in this game. Kicking off with the Steam Deck, we need to run at 1280x720p with FSR 2 performance engaged. The Steam Deck can become CPU bound due to the excellent multi-threading within the engine, 60 FPS is never really an option even at low settings, and as such my recommended choice is to set the game at medium or high and cap to 30 FPS using the Steam's OS, as the game does not offer a 30 FPS cap in the menu. By lowering the FX you can boost FSR2 settings to quality, but lights and shadow should be set with medium but leave SSAO on for the best balance of image quality and fidelity. Now due to the split pools of RAM, the CPU demands and overall PC architecture and API changes to console which includes the Steam Deck, these do suffer from stutters and pauses during play not present on consoles. Some may still be a few shader compilation on occasion as you see here, but the game does pre-build these up front before you start the game, and by and large they cover almost the entire game, but you will get some stutters from time to time in the game. The biggest stutters though come from streaming data from the drive, and these can be worse at times, with the Steam Deck being the most effective due to its relatively weak CPU and slower bandwidth. The game is designed around an SSD, so load times are quick. Continuing from boot on console and PC alike, it's instantaneous like an old cartridge, but depending on your drive, you may also see some bigger stutters with loading and data streaming. Now aside from these admittedly quite impactful performance woes, the Steam Deck does a superb job of offering this modern remake quality in your hand at a largely locked 30fps. 
but as stated, the majority of these stutters are not DirectX 12 shader related, but in your first play, be prepared for the annoyance of stutters when entering new areas, spawning shader effects, and even during cutscenes. And then you can get smaller stutters when walking through hub areas or entering a new area. And even if you've been there before, it can consistently do it. Now this carries over to the PC where using my RTX 2070 with close to the console's ray trace settings with DLSS 2 balanced engaged at 1800p, we can see the first run versus the second run doubles our performance with the main issue here appearing to be a bug and memory related with data moving from the SSD into system RAM and then over to VRAM which causes the GPU and CPU to stall and thus frame times to hang low until the issue clears up and then performance and utilization returns to maximum. I must stress this is likely a bug with the combination of my machine and an issue within the engine itself and the demands on that CPU, SSD and RAM as mentioned. But using the second run, the performance is close to the Series X and PlayStation 5 in these sections. The data stuttering again happens as you continue through the game and new areas and sections load in, which can be annoying, and it means that even above 60 FPS, which is fully capable on many PCs, here my RX 6800 at 1440p maximum ultra settings can happily run somewhere between 100 and 90 FPS, but you'll still get these judders and stutters, and the frame rate doesn't matter at this point, it's the frame time. You can get 100, 150 millisecond pauses as it goes into these new sections, which can never be ignored. And this happens across all my PC machines from Nvidia to AMD. Note that both PCs are running the same SSD with a 1.5 gigabytes per second bandwidth as a minimum, but the faster your PC CPU and memory, the less these problems will be visible as the data being shifted between SSD, system RAM and VRAM through the PCI Express can be frequent. Now these can improve the second or more times you play the section as the data is likely already present in system RAM or VRAM, reducing the delay on keeping the hardware busy. And I hope the team can work on fixing these with a patch later on. Although it doesn't ruin the game or is constant, it can leave the PC suffering more in performance than all three consoles, even with the minimum PC specs likely making this issue worse. The Steam Deck is the one that suffers the most as it can pause for 15 to 20 seconds at times. Ultimately, Dead Space remains a horror classic, and the team have reimagined the game from a visual and story perspective. Now, although the engine and game scales right down to handheld mode on the Steam Deck, the PC version still feels and performs a little rougher around the edges compared to the console version, due to those stutters from heavy data seek and loading the entire game is designed around, and the weaker your machine, the worse these will be. As such, the game is best experienced in its current form on a now generation console or a very high end PC which can push 120 FPS plus and maybe even native 4K. The patch to now cap Series S to 30 FPS along with that ray tracing mode would have been better with a toggle but as shown the headroom does give a lock 30 FPS across all three. The performance mode is close enough to the 60fps range and with VRR engaged it is the smoothest and most consistent version at launch and hopefully patches can drop soon to resolve the issues here as this is one of the very best remakes I have played and managed to achieve that rare balance of sympathetically improving and changing the original to make it the very best version of Dead Space you can play. Anyway, that's it for another deep dive into games, technology, and all things console and PC related. And remember, if you like what we do here on IGN, then keep it IGN Performance Reviews, and we'll catch you on the next one.